Good time, everybody. Uh, today is uh, November 17, 2015. Hello, Brian. Hello, Johannes. Johannes cooking pizza as usual. Uh, and hey, Karen. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Wendy. And it's my pleasure and honor to welcome Brooke channeling. You will channel with us again, right? Yes, I will. Right. So, um, Brooke is offering, you're already doing it for a while, right? Soul channeling sessions. Mm -hmm. Soul channeling sessions. And you can contact Brooke through Gmail, uh, Brooke Allison. Alison at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And the typical session would be 45 minutes and it would cost $66 symbolically. What else do we need to tell? Get in touch. Brooke is in Chicago time zone, central time zone. Mm -hmm. So get in touch with her and um, you can have a private session. I don't have any more announcements, uh, except that I hope you'll do it every couple of weeks. That would be wonderful. Welcome, Brooke. And oh, w one more thing. I, I might go channeling, too. If I go channeling, that would be my higher self collective, which I call Erro. So if there is a question where I, uh, they can contribute, or I can contribute, I will yeah, prepare your questions. Any topics today? Hmm. Any topics for you? I think my topics will be brought up by others, so I don't okay. have to announce them. I know them. <laughs> okay. I feel I feel the same. Yes. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. So we we'll start. Um, we read the tech. You know, you can speak up your questions, or you can read the questions. Uh, type the questions in the chat box. I guess you we'll, might check the questions and answers from outside, but but chat box is my preferable way. And if there is no one asking questions, then I will you know ask my uh, the questions myself. So we can start, I guess. I think um, and please let me know if I need to speak up as well. Um, this is always helpful for me to hear this. <laughs> when I say speak up, what do you mean? Um, sometimes I get into a lower okay. uh, vibration in my voice and it right. sounds like mumbling. Okay, so, I will watch it. Okay. Um, as I watch these candles near my hair, too. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will take care of you. Don't, you don't get them placed. I, I will watch it. The goddess always, always asks to be safe. Um, I just like to start this invocation today with, yes, absolutely joy, play, divine laughter, acknowledging that this is the spiritual path and that we allow ourselves, we can allow ourselves to have utmost joy, laughter, play, love like a child at all times, despite whatever shadow is with us collectively or interpersonally or simply personally on a multidimensional level. So I'd like to just invoke the pure bliss of joy. And I'd like to also invoke the pure state of peace at this time. And of course, with those two, joy and peace, there is love always behind them. So I'd like to just take a few moments to just sit with these three things of joy, peace, and love and connect with our heart center, our heart space, 
in the middle of our sacred vessel, our sacred body. Sending white light to your entire body from your crown chakra to your root chakra to your feet chakra three feet below and three feet above and three feet in front behind <clears throat> to the sides go ahead and develop a white aura right now adding any colors acknowledging any vibrations of words of feeling sensations feel free to add them to your aura and just breathe with it May peace prevail in the inner joy, in the inner harmony of our hearts. May peace prevail, may peace prevail. And so it is. Mm. Thank you, Mother, Father. Thank you, Goddess. The space is now open for us to exchange the Goddess that Brooke is channeling in her vessel is ready or if there's any topics we'd like to begin on Brian, Johannes, Kaden, Michelle Michelle I know you want to go first always go ahead yeah uh, this is Brian um, how about the love? Why is it so important to love the self? Why why choose love? A beautiful question. A rich question. Why choose love? The act of choosing is this divine gift every day we have choices to consume sometimes affected by the culture that we live in sometimes affected by our ancestry and sometimes affected by our ego the ego as love is a choice we can choose fear we can choose 
our form, our identity, our ego. We can use our sacred tool of logic. To have us understand anything we would like to understand in the world. Why certain things happen. Why don't certain things happen? Why is it that people experience certain things? Why is it that I experience certain things? These are all questions to filter through the body. But if we allow these questions to naturally flow in our body, they will go straight to the heart. If we allow relaxation of the self, if we allow the ego to relax, the ego doesn't like to be relaxed. It is constantly performing. It is constantly giving us the show that we desire that day, that moment, that history. History is a performance of ego. Yet we have the choice in our performance There are so many choices when the ego is involved concerning performance. Limitless choices, limitless ideas, insights, even genius ideas. The ego is so brilliant because of this. But when it comes to mastering the emotional body, the ego is not as trained as our natural Gaic body of the goddess, our natural, organic, sacred vessel from Mother Earth, born out of a womb that was born out of a womb that was born out of the universal womb. Choosing self-love, choosing love is so, so, uh, <laughs> apparent. when we can observe everything that is outside of our body, all the diverse energies going around us constantly, all insights from the different dimensions we are living in right now,
even information from our beloved guides, ascended masters, angelic beings, galactic family. They're all here for your highest, highest good, your highest heart. We must always discern with the heart of observation, the heart of neutral compassion, allowing ourselves to relax into the heart opens us in a different way than when the ego is performing. Seeking, thirsty, hungry for answers. The heart is always full. Full of food, and full of your inner wisdom. That is why we must choose love. Mm. Beautiful question, thank you. Beautiful question, thank you. Uh, why to choose self-love is a mantra. It's a poem. It is a prayer which you can repeat every day. It is so liberating, so educating, and so healing because what is love? What is beauty? Why to choose beauty? Why to choose? Choosing by itself is so surprising concept for many. Why to choose self, right? Just noticing self in the picture of choices is amazing. Just noticing that self is there and you can choose is surprising. Try to choose self unlove, negative love. Try that. It will be healing as well because even there, you by neglecting parts of yourself, you discover yourself. You discover inner pains which were hidden. You discover inner core vibration which you cannot dump. By rejecting self, you discover yourself. By rejecting self, you purify yourself. You can dump anything except your core vibration which will, which will still be there. So whatever you do will be love. No matter what you do will be self-love, self-discovery. So ask yourself daily, hourly, minutely, secondly, <laughs> why to choose self Anyone? Go ahead. This is Michelle. Um, what would you recommend for someone as a practice who has zero concept of what it means to have self-love? Of nothing, I mean, the judgment, like their self is mostly about judgment and fear and pain and not good enough and not good enough and not good enough. 
what would be an introduction, an easy introduction for a person who suffers greatly with not good enough and worse um, as an identity. Hmm. What came up for my higher self was connecting to the mother as much as possible in her organic form, allowing there to be space. A person, an individual who may be out of touch with their inner nurturer, with their love, for themselves, <laughs> connecting with nature, going on walks, hiking, putting the body outside, having companions with the body outside, with no agenda, except for just being, breathing the oxygen, the purity of the mother, feeling her elements, the air, earth, going near water, all these are what we are so so in the right place to allow ourselves to have. These are our sacred rights, living on Mother Earth, to be with her when we're detached from the love that is all around. Because in the steps of the ascension, Sometimes we can't feel it so deeply in ourselves first. Sometimes individuals who go to spiritual classes, who read spiritual books, self-help books, anything that they're following their intuition is so good. That is so good. That inner reflection, the self-discovery, but just allowing the person to look, use their senses, and that's all. Sensory awareness outside in the Gaia field. And with that sensory awareness, also bring the mother into the body, putting in whole foods, greens, organic vegetables, fruits, the diet we are usually disconnected with, allowing ourselves to be nurtured by food, allowing ourselves to have breakfast for once, connecting with the mother in all ways, whether it's physical food of her, not processed, not already refined, having holistic foods in the body will trigger over time greater self-love. It is just a step and it's an unconscious but also conscious step of course because you're choosing what to put in your body but the body will organically change once these foods are put in, once the chemicals that we are exposed to, perhaps the fluoride in the water, changing water, 
the goddess is telling me right now. There's a big step in self-love. Choosing alkalinic, distilled, being conscious of where your water comes from and what that does to your body. And also having sacraments of the mother around, flowers, plants, animals, these are all things to connect with self-love. Thank you. These are all the elements to connect to self-love. Consider shifting back and forth. When you shift, you feel safer because there is always a step one way and return, step another way and return. So you know when you dive, you get out. You dive, you get out. Shift between giving and taking, giving and taking, proactive, passive, proactive, passive. One of the extremes to discover yourself is to become so selfless to dissolve in another one and to see yourself through the, uh, their eyes. When you see yourself through their eyes, you might find yourself another faucet of yourself, another meaning of yourself better. This void, void, silence, invitation, practice, experiment with asking questions so tiny they can be asked in one syllable, like, hmm, 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 like that. Very, 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 very short questions and inviting just with your inner void, inner vacuum, inner invitation, the hunger, invite the answers with your inner energetic hunger and listen. Mm -hmm. And shift between giving the words and absorbing, listening, practice shifting between saying and listening very hungrily, very acceptingly. Mm -hmm. And that might trigger the discovery trigger the mm, discovering of another you there, deeper you. Yes. Thanks, Max. Thank you. I have a question. This is Valerie. Hey, Valerie. And there's my dog squeaking in a toy in the background. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, my question is um, actually for a, friend, a really good friend of mine. Um, I got a call the other night that she had tried to commit suicide. Her boyfriend said goodbye. And she wraps a lot of her own self-worth up in her guy. And um, they hadn't really even been dating that long. It's just she wants someone in her life so bad that this was just devastating to her. Um, I don't even really know what to say or do to help her right now. Um, do you have any advice for me? <laughs> Who is this person? Is it your... She's a really good friend of mine. Uh -huh. Her name is Christy. Mm -hmm. and she lives here in town. And um, she's had a lot of struggles throughout her life, but she got really on track and has been pretty successful about finding a job and lifting herself back up. Um, went from being homeless to having her own place and nice job, all that, but wanted a man to share it with her. Um, she even changed religions for him and became uh, Jewish. And uh, this is all really fast in a matter of less than six months. 
but she just fell head over heels for this guy and then he said goodbye and she tried to kill herself and I just I don't know what to tell her or what to say that can help her experience more self-love in herself that she wouldn't put so much of herself out there so fast um, is there any advice on that Yes, the goddess is simply saying, listen. Listen to your friend. Have that space for her open. No words necessary. You already can carry a divine, compassionate, heart and your friend knows this so my dear just caring like you always do your divine compassionate heart in the circumstance as well holding facilitating Yes, space for your friend, if that's what she desires, if that what your intuition, your higher self said it is appropriate in the utmost peace, harmony, and love for yourself first. Check in with that. and continue to be this divine loving friend that you already are and the self-love that you carry and the self-love that you embody the energetics although they might not be visible at first or even ever trust and surrender that you carry this divine self-compassion self-love and that's all you have to do is continue to carry it continue to grow deeper in yourself and continue to embody this for your friend look at her with loving accepting eyes of the goddess eyes of the mother one hundred percent unconditional love it's what we all deserve from all our relationships thank you that's exactly what I have for her that is all we deserve the most healing for you and for her would be just accepting any outcome, any outcome, any outcome. In most cases we say she already died and then was brought back miraculously. In most cases that's what happens. She carries that passion for self-destruction and that is a very creative force as well. This idea of diving full steam somewhere and not caring about survival is actually very creative in many ways. The outcome is not defined 
the outcome is not defined, accept any outcome, it's not defined yet. It is a choice, always a choice, which happens here and on the other side. But if she comes back, and it's most painful coming back, because there is a hole in ore, a hole in etheric field, hole in the heart. If she comes back out of that and recovers, she becomes stronger, she becomes stronger, and the vortex of pain converts with time and care into vortex of strength. Vortex of strength. For many, it is <laughs> unavoidable, programmed, designed, mm, predetermined path to finding themselves. It's path to becoming self-sufficient and then loving others from the place of peace, from the place of self-sufficiency. Yes, we come here incomplete and these pains, when healed, might become points of strength, vortexes of reference, which build a character and allow the person to step up and become whole by themselves and then go with love from that point of, that higher point of stability, self-sufficiency, yes. Just understanding this and then accepting any outcome would be healing for all of you. Yes, thank you. I'd like to add that I just got a message from her and she changed her name. Yeah, <laughs> from Christine maybe she does feel reborn. Many of us change our names, often. I never have. I feel like, well, when I was younger, I went by names that weren't actually mine, just by who my mother married, their last names. So when I had the opportunity to have the name that I was actually born with, I uh, took that and I don't want to give it up. That's just who I am, and I enjoy feeling who I am. And thank you. We invite more questions and topics. I can have a question if I can. This is Johannes. Hi, Johannes. Hello. Um, it was on my mind. Um, if there are any herbs, any herbs, uh, let's say five herbs that would be beneficial for me to to use at this time, and and if you could name five of them, then also why they would be beneficial for me. Hmm. What is your day and month of birth? Um, 1988, October 7th. And what's your favorite color? Uh, green and blue. And blue? Green mostly, but yeah, blue comes with it. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I'm getting one right now as an activator, it's something that will stir the heat into use in cooking and soups and dressings of any sort. The herb rosemary, fresh rosemary. Mm. Let me check what else is coming through. Um, Kava Kava just came through. Um, Kava Kava is a natural herb for relaxation, um, even anxiety, something to just help you guide deeper into your essence, deeper into your heart essence, my dear. Kava Kava is similar that it'll to, uh, to Valorin, but Valorin is not the medicine I'm getting for you. Valorin, to be aware because they might be next to each other, Valorin is something, um, an alternative to a sleeping aid, but it's quite intense. It's not as motherly as Kava Kava. Kava Kava is very motherly. Sometimes even comparable to low doses of marijuana. Kava Kava is a mother herb in that way. So kava kava and rosemary are coming through. Mm. At the moment, I'm not getting anything else. How about you, Max? Thank you. Uh, just based on uh, your zodiac, we would say that it's very essential for you to be with others, to be linked to others in a very friendly, happy fashion, very balanced fashion. So whatever you use, share with your friends and dear ones. Uh, burning different sorts of pine chips, pine different sorts of evergreens that comes. And um, that is for the smoke and uh, incense. And <laughs> yeah, lemon peel just to add to water. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. More questions, topics? I can come up with more questions, but I've already had a turn. Would somebody else like to go? Let me ask around who we have. Uh, Ellen? I was going to say, Wendy, you have to have something. <laughs> You're funny. Actually, I was. It's interesting because many of the questions I had have either already been answered or I seem to instinctively already know. Um, but I, in my effort to promote awareness globally, of the idea of harmony and finding harmony within our within ourselves, um, 
I mean, I guess aside from the obvious, following our joy, um, being our true selves, is there anything else that perhaps you could help to any of us, myself or any of us, to promote the idea inside of ourselves of um, how do we help another find their own light and to assist us in prom promoting harmony within each other or finding their own harmony um, you know is there a is there some other <laughs> I, I guess I maybe already know my answer but is there another another way that you could help us promote that idea of finding find, helping us find the light within each other or, or allowing ourselves to show another their own light that's that's really what I'm going for mm. What are your creative practices, Wendy? Wow, I have many. Um, my probably my prim primary creative practices right now are bringing channeled messages through the emissaries of the Light Collective um, in videos, being in nature, uh, being uh, promoting harmony. Um, within showing everyone that if you're everything that you've already said today being in nature and that love is our true core vibration and trying to express that to the world in showing them the trees and the grass and the beauty of the simplicity of the planet and just showing them that it's right here in your own backyard it's right here in your own heart um, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> Beautiful. There are a couple of things. Um, I see that perhaps there is an opportunity here. Excuse me to get creative in how you perceive your creative acts right now. Perception of creativity, perception of other people's creativity, their divine light. There's room for exploration there is what I'm getting. And also, there's room for deeper trust in this exploration. Deeper trust of what you're doing is in alignment with your heart's highest calling, your heart's highest self. And that you're doing enough. You are enough. Wow, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I have to tell you that yesterday I posted a video and it's called Trust. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank you for that validation. Absolutely. Wendy, and I was going to expand on that. Uh, go ahead, Brooke. You want to finish? It will get, um, this topic will be brought up later. Please go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to expand on uh, Wendy's question. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, Wendy, the, uh, what, how to show others how for them to receive it in a way that you're sharing with them, um, uh, to see their own brilliance within themselves, uh, it comes from the state of you being vulnerable and sharing yourself with them without judgment, without just being the observer around them as you're sharing. That way there's no push or pull energies. The, you're just allowing them to feel that love, that vibration that you're giving off 
that reflection that you're reflecting uh, just by you sharing in that dialogue with them uh, coming from a place of love and self-appreciation you are giving them the opportunity to grow and expand uh, to see that brilliance within themselves that ah, uh, she's not pushing why should I uh, she's not pulling why should I you're being the observer. You're you're pushing. You're not. No, there's no 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 necessity to judge. There's just an allowance. And by that very fact, by that you just doing that, allowing that, uh, you're gifting them with the greatest gift of the universe to find it within themselves. I hope that helps. Much love, Wendy. Thank you, Brian. I love you, Brian. Thank you, and and thank you, Goddess. Yes, you both really helped me a lot because it is it's it's our own self judgment that prevents us from shining our own light and when we drop our own self-judgment we give permission to others to drop theirs and sometimes we you know I sometimes I have to listen to my own messages mm -hmm. yes that's why we create it is absolutely why we create if you look at any artist any any person because we are all artists there's just some Mm, healing to do with a lot of archetypes and awareness around that. We are all artists on the Mother Earth. You're all artists in also different dimensions as well. And with this sacredness that we all carry, whatever we are creating, whatever we are in utmost in the moment, that joyfulness, that no thought process, no ego involved, no, that, that pure focus, meditative attention to a divine engagement that a child has with building a, a, a building out of blocks or a child has with just learning how to play an instrument for the first time. Whatever an individual creates, whatever an individual shares fully with all their chakras, open in complete trust with the divine genius inside of them, that is something that is an absolute in alignment with divinity. That is God in action. That is God not just existing. That is not just us looking in the other's beloved eyes and acknowledging, I see the God the goddess in you, therefore I see the God the goddess in me. But seeing them actually channel <laughs> their artistic, specific, because every soul is different. Every soul's blueprint is so different. That artistic distinction that we all carry um, is so beautiful to witness and to observe around you, too, that other people are doing not at all the exact same way you are doing, but they're doing similar things, and you can see that the light is so engaged with this creativeness. It, it's just quite amazing just to acknowledge that we're all in our most divine divinity when we are in this creative flow, and this creative surrender to share also. <laughs> surrender to share. Thank you. Surrender to share. The, we bring up again the idea of shifting between speaking and listening. And when listening, be allow them to express themselves in a way which is natural, native for their state right now, for their level right now and reflect to them on their level first. Step sideways, up, down, forward ways, anywhere, but match their vibration. Start from matching their vibration temporarily, and then lifting them up by reflecting to them what they said, what they vibrated, what they shared through your lens of your vibration. The principle of next step. You don't have to give anybody all the answers. Just giving them your reflection, your single idea of what would be 
the next step? What is today's message? What is today's word for them? What is today's vibe for them to leave them up? I love that. Thank you. I love that. And I love that surrender to share. I absolutely love that. Mm, um, for those outside of the chat, outside of the screen, uh, I'm checking once in a while question and answers which are accessible. You can type your questions from outside of that uh, webinar and I will be checking and we can take the questions from there. Questions and answers. QA button. Next question please. Next topic please. Thank you. If no one else wants to say anything, I would like to bring up the topic of um, how we can all effect peace on Earth. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> it's already here. <laughs> Although we might not be able to see it, feel it, sense it, although our brothers and sisters might be so far from it, peace is already here. The goddess Gaia has ascended. Peace is here. Peace is here. Peace is here. This is a belief that we must carry all the time a belief that we carry zero doubt that peace is already here and that if there's any challenge any discussion okay so you carry this divine knowledge this inner wisdom that peace is already here because peace is in my body it is in my soul, it is in my heart. Okay, but I see in other hearts, peace is clearly not there. I acknowledge that. I do not turn away. I do not ignore. I simply acknowledge with neutral compassion that yes, there is peace accessible to every single one of us. Every single one of us. But some are not able to access that right now. But I believe, I support in peace, in peacemaking, in peace being, peace doing, peaceful reality, peaceful prayer, peaceful speech. I do not speak anything that is not peace. I do not dream about anything that's not peace. My reality, my dreams, my subconscious thoughts are peace. Peaceful, infectious behavior is what we must divinely carry, divinely believe, and divinely to surrender to share this. No matter the naysayers, <laughs> because Goddess acknowledges that there will be challenges to this. Some personal challenges that might challenge the ego. That might the ego might say, well, I have an intellectual intellectual discourse on what peace is. Sure, let me share it. Is that a heart discourse? Is what the goddess wants us to ask ourselves? Is whatever discourse we're participating in, is that peaceful? Is that filled with love, peace? Sacred action of peace must match sacred being of peace. That's all she has to say right now. 
Thank you, Peace Anna. Yes. Peaceful, infectious behavior. Peace is here, peace is now. We invite again the idea of shifting. <laughs> um, when you shift, don't forget to come back. When you die, don't forget to come back. When you die, you have to come back to get a piece of breath of fresh air. You cannot be there for a long time. But shifting is the idea of healing others. Staying fully separated from the world is a healing choice. But diving there and bringing it back to peace is another valid choice. To dive there, don't, when you dive there, don't forget to come back to the state of peace. Understand that all of you now are dreaming a physical life. You are eternal spirits dreaming that you are living a physical life. And there, here, you meet other people who are also dreaming. It's a collective dream. And amazingly, those people have different past and different future than you do. The whole reality of theirs could be very different. You meet them face to face, but you come from a different world and you remain in this different world, which you create. And they come from a different world and they may choose to stay in their different world, which they create. So you define your future, you define your past by the state of your vibration, by the state of your focus of attention. If you haven't done so, do your research. You may choose to do your research into conspiracy. But don't forget to come back. The names are Alex Jones. David Icke, research, but don't forget to come back. You have, you might want to be aware of those ideas of conspiracy and negativity, but don't forget to come back. Um, Project Camelot with Kerry Cassidy, Cassiopeia.org with Laura Knight Yadzik, David Wilcock. These are enlightened names who play on the dark side. They fix the world on the dark side. Dive there, check it out, but don't forget to come back. And coming back is easy. You don't have to be on either side. Understand that these conspirators, they keep control by making money, and they make money by terrorizing areas of the world. You terrorize, they, they terrorize an area of the world and the exchange rate of the currency in the, if the currency in, the, in this area of the world goes down and that's how the money are made and by selling weapons. Uh, they cannot predict the future but they can make the tomorrow by predicting and terrorizing the world on schedule. So first they buy things then they terrorize, the exchange rate goes down and they sell things with, and make money this way. It's all cross-linked web which is falling apart and it's not your world falling apart. You choose where you stay. You choose in, in any circumstance, in any darkness, you always can choose the bright side. You always can choose the good wolves and feed the good wolf, wolves. Wolf. Tomorrowland, watch the movie, 2015 is wonderful, brought up a couple of movies, Tomorrowland is one of them, where this idea is beautifully, beautifully, beautifully 
laid out. Feed the good wolf. Don't focus. Don't focus on the conspiracy. Don't focus on negativity. And another one is inside out. Inside out and tomorrow. Ah, peace is here and now. Choose it. Stay in it. And all the darkness, just let it be. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You are in peace. You choose it. And be in infectious state of peace. Thank you, thank you for the question. Well, thank you so much. I'd just like to add to that. Is it true, like, that that the dark feeds off of that kind of energy, that kind of fear that they create um, with these false flags and, you know, making people stay on the edge? And uh, I've, I've heard the word for that. I can't quite remember what it is. But um, it's an energy that they they feed on it, like like we eat. And uh, is that is that true? I see her shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's a dark entity. Yes. Mhm. Mm so it's better for us to stay in peace for that as well, so we don't feed into that. Absolutely. This is this is energetics. This is evolved conscious energetics, spiritual energetics, acknowledging that there are dark entity entities around us as well as the highest vibration of light entities, of peaceful. Goddess doesn't like to use the word warriors, but for this example, peaceful warriors. We are. We must be. But, Go ahead. But there are dark entities, yes. Yeah, it's good. To, I think it's good to be aware of that. Absolutely. But at the same time, just uh, stay in your own uh, energy. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's good able protection, to, is it not? Absolutely. You'll be able to discern more and more. What was, you know, that might have. Did I just hear? I felt something. The slightest of sensation. What was that psychic information I just got? What is that? Is a dark entity. Oh, I see. I release that dark entity. I see now. It's about developing this muscle of clarity. And yes, to develop the muscle of clarity, we must have acknowledgement of the darker entity forces. We must. I love the, the metaphor of diving in, but then looking up above, having a breath of air, seeing the sun. We must have both. But yes, exercising these muscles is quite, quite protective and quite the new tool for the ascension as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is that um, I feel like that this should be the new normal. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. So be aware, but don't stay focused on the negative. Because the more you are there in the conspiracy theory, the more your world changes. You just shift to that world. And the more you stay there, the more proofs you will get that it's absolutely real and the world is ended. But if you pull yourself back into the state of peace, the more proof you will get that everything is going fine because you just changed the future. You just shifted from the world of darkness, which will end, to the world of light, which will continue. You define your reality through the law of attraction. It's very practical. Just the proofs that come to you daily are defined by your state. So whenever you can smile, whenever, yes, things happen. Smile, say thank you. <laughs> Healing starts from smiling and thanking. Mm. And, and I believe gratefulness. I am so grateful. And that has gotten me through a lot here lately. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for your advice, both of you. Mm. Understand that we are healing the old traumas. The traumas of Middle Ages, the traumas of the last war, the traumas of the biggest one of the destruction of Atlantis. It's all 
resonates now, comes up now. All these entities, they are not really, really bad. They are the entities, the energies of destruction. Heal them too. Understand, they have their place in this matrix, in this dream, they have their place. Just leave to learn with them, but don't focus to them and don't feed them. Don't feed them. Don't feed the wolf. <laughs> yes, that brings up a, just one more little addition there. Um, the transmuting of energy where we can uh, basically see the dark and know it's there, but uh, bring it in and let it back out as peace. Um, am I correct in that thinking? that we are supposed to be transmuting this darkness into light? Hmm. Yes, there is. That is essentially alchemy, what you just described. And yes, that is one of our, our duties as sacred carriers of light. But thank you for bringing that up. It's very good to acknowledge this. But I wouldn't have that as the to-do list, my higher self was saying. Um, I would have that as I recognize this is an element, but it's not on my, my sacred list of being and doing this. It's an element, yes, but it's not. Be careful that it becomes a motivator. But if it, if it becomes a motivator, it will challenge a lot of things in our ego personality that we already worked through, that we already released, rewrote, evolved into multidimensional love that has mastered the ego. So that is, that is information I'm channeling, is that very good to acknowledge all these things but very good to be aware that certain elements don't become motivators for something to happen because that's the ego trying to trick us into foreseeing different opportunities, different agendas that are not peace because our only agenda is peace and that's what we should be focusing on. My agenda is peace, and peace will prevail. Can I add something to that? <clears throat> Please. Just the fact that darkness serves its own purpose, and it is part of the one, it's part of the whole, and in and of itself, it is what it is. And again, agreeing, you only have to choose what you're focused upon. If you want more darkness, go fight it you only expand it. But if you want more light, then, then, then raise it up, make it more brilliant, and it will grow. In this world, our goal in this existence is to bring more light. There may be other existences where darkness is the goal, and that's a different reality and a different uh, existence from this one. So there's no good or bad in essence. There is light, there is dark, but both are valid and both are real. It's what do you want, and choosing what you want is only what you need to focus on, and not the other way around. That was all I had to say. Wonderful. Absolutely. Here, here. And so is that really how you transmute, pretty much, is just keeping your own light well, you don't transmute your the light. You don't transmute right. dark into light. What you do is you amplify your own light, and then there's more. But you don't even need to acknowledge the dark. You can say, okay, I see you, I acknowledge you, but you don't focus on trying to change the darkness. You focus on bringing in more light. The alchemy... Oh, go ahead. No, that was it. The alchemy of this transmutation you speak of, this dark into light, that is something that is an old paradigm. It's an old story. It's in, it, it's in a lot of archetypes and it's in a lot of heroines, heroes' journeys as well. 
So acknowledging that that's part of the story too, that in our utmost divine creativity that we need more stories to be told, that there doesn't need to be this this alchemy of dark transmuting into light anymore because easier for us to be exchanging right now and to be aware that light is the only way to peace and that is where we focus our deepest heartfelt intentions and reality on but there are still around us in society these old stories of how do we how do we do this so acknowledging these old stories as simply old stories <laughs> period and that we are re rewriting history right now and in order to rewrite history we have to be imagining more brilliant more magnetic, more multidimensional, more quote unquote otherworldly stories of hope, peace, joy, and love, but of course simply light. Simply, simply light. Okay, so um, like I have siblings that have, you know, also went through the horrendous childhood that I have, but I have come out on the other side of it and they're still stuck in that mm. and so by transmuting I guess that's what I was trying to get at is you know when they start to talk of um, some things that are from the past that upset them that no longer upset me um, I, I wonder how can I um, show them the way because like I know the way inside of me but it's really hard to show mm someone else um, the light, so to speak, or mm -hmm. how to transmute that darkness inside of yourself into light. That's what I, I guess I was getting at. Mm. It goes into this divine creativity, this divine imagination that you carry, that you embody, and that you are. Acknowledging that you are enough, and acknowledging that your siblings have their own paths of self-discovery of the light within and acknowledging that we might not be able to help in our deepest desire that our ego really wants to help our ego really wants to change other people our ego really wants our family to be liberated because our Ego and heart want everyone to be liberated. A divine alignment of ego and heart wants freedom for all, peace for all, love for all. But in terms of practicality, especially with intimacy, history in this physical incarnation with beloved brothers and sisters, it can get a little murky in that area. And that's where this discernment of where do I spend my sacred time? Do I spend it healing myself? Do I spend it cultivating my own light? Or do I spend it how to create other ways for other people to cultivate their own light? Looking at inside for everything as the answer with a child's heart Children do not have this instinct to want to, I suppose, heal other people that we have. This is, I would say, a shadow side to light workers that, if not acknowledged, it's, it still exists, that my higher self is channeling and wanting to share this because it's my own experience, that I, too, had siblings who I wanted them to see the light. I wanted that. So I tried. <laughs> in, my, in the space that I, that I knew what was real. But when it came down to really listening to my heart, all I had to do was really listen to my heart and be the light that I am. It is so simple in that regard. And that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Hmm. I completely understand. Um, 
that's very helpful with uh, holidays coming up and spending time with siblings who are still in that frame of mind. I'll just um, stay in my own <laughs> and try to be uh, the kind and loving person that I am all the time and just not let that enter into my psyche so or my heart. So that's wonderful. Thank you. And acknowledging that it's effortless. There's no effort involved in being the divine, sacred, loving person you are, my dear. There's no effort at all. There's no challenge. You've mastered listening, observation. You've mastered um, responses. You no longer respond to things that used to be triggers for you. And you acknowledge this in other people that are, that are still triggered by certain events, certain family circumstances, certain <laughs> even something with a parking issue I feel like is coming up that might happen or may have happened for you. People are, are triggered a lot around us, but I deeply sense that you've mastered this and that your response to every situation is breathing, connecting, observing, processing, not judging any emotions that come up, entering a state of self-love while you're with family members is what I'm getting. Yes, I believe that will be easy to see. Mm. Thank you so much. Thanks Bless to everybody in, the, in our group, too, for helping me with this. I will just say that I had the same situation, and my brother had the same situation. We had very many of the same vibes, but he had his choices, and I just had to let him go his path. I offered him my advice and help and everything, but I just had to allow him to make his choices. Mm. He was a nice person, just, <laughs> just he didn't, uh, he wasn't able to get out of the ideology, I would say that, out of the Russian Orthodox self-destruction. I was near. And it was always a struggle between me offering and him rejecting. But I just kept offering. And there was a place where the, he offered the condition that we can discuss anything except mm, anything important. So that's what we did. Yes, and I kept breathing. Yes. Breathing is the answer to all the holidays. <laughs> I have a question, if I may. Yay. About about time. Because as an energy, as a as a being, you're you have the perspective of being out of time and, and seeing things from that perspective. But in your estimation of remembrance of time, how long are we here? Is it a blink, really? In, in the next blink, are you talking to other beings who have the same similar questions? And two blinks ago, was there another whole group of beings? How long have you really been at this, and how long does it last for you, the memory of one soul that's talking to you or one incarnated being talking to you? I, I know it's a strange question, but I just I would like to just get a, an idea of, you know, how long is it two blinks and then you're in, it's another group of people? I just have that feeling, so I don't, I don't know why, but I, it's just my feeling I have. Mm. Mm.
What I'm getting is that it's the slightest atomic particles of our breathing. And that in certain states, we can still have a heartbeat and not breathe anymore. That's an example of the timeless soul, the eternal soul, is when we are able to master breathing techniques consciously to a point that it's unconsciously. And that, yes, it is a blink. It absolutely is. But what I'm seeing is that it's even smaller in the sense of the air that we breathe, the tiniest particles that enter us. Those have the answers of this timelessness, the eternal flame, the history of you. <laughs> How about you, Max? Hmm. Hmm. There are many times, many, many concepts of time. There is this time, elevated time, and then the times in uh, higher realities as well. To evolve, to change, you have to some have to have some sort of reference. Here we are dragged through the time. There it is more like a multidimensional swimming pool where you can go anywhere at will, but still you can go and change at will. You have choices. Time, the illusion of time is necessary for the idea of choices. Mm -hmm. And Time is not more any more illusionary than space. It's the same level of illusion. So, if you're playing in this world, we would suggest being in peace with time as well. Be in peace with your body, with the, with the illusion of your body, with the illusion of space, with the illusion of time. It's all the same fabric, same matrix. Play with it. It's a gift to you. You chose to play here, so play with your toys. Of course it's fluid, of course you can shift it one, one way or another. If you want exact number, that would be more like trillions of flashes per second, more like trillions. And it's actually known by physicists, so, so you can just research that. There are, again, different estimates between billions and trillions of shifts per second, yes. Ah, the best idea is, of course, that you define your reality, your vibration defines in which of their moments, in which of their flashes you will get next. And you, you define not only the future, you define the past. And you can shift sideways as well. And some mornings you wake up and you smile and I said, oh, I shifted again. <laughs> it seems to me like um, time is speeding up. Is is that correct? I mean, I seriously do believe that um, I'll just have like skips in time, like it was this time and all of a sudden it's that time and it seems as though no time went by, <laughs> seriously. As Bashar would say, it's becoming more malleable. Mm -hmm. Yes, the feel ourselves. We can actually feel ourselves moving through the dimensions and moving through the timelines in ways that we've never been able to be aware of doing before. 
I want to throw in there, I've had the opposite experience where I feel like a lot of time has passed and I will look down and I will note the time and it seems like a lot, like say 20 minutes has passed because I've been busy doing something and it will be exactly the same time. So it happens both ways. Yes, and that's what they mean by malleable, that we can actually, you can stretch out a moment so long that it can feel like a day or the opposite. You could be doing something for hours and hours and hours and you only feel as if minutes or, or a couple of hours have passed and we remind ourselves that when we are in joy we do not age. You are beyond time when you are in joy. So in that six hours that you we're doing something in your joy and you feel as only an hour or two has passed, well you've only aged an hour or two. That's how malleable time is. Okay, so you know, if you're just um, like, I don't have to work for somebody else right now, so I pretty much get to do what I love all the time. And so maybe that's why I have that sensation of time just whipping by all the time on me. Like <laughs> every time I turn around, the hours are gone. <laughs> but I've been I've been enjoying myself during that time. So okay, that kind of makes the sense. old expression "time flies when you're having fun." There really is a physics behind it. There's physics behind that. We got Stephen here. Stephen, do you want to speak? Uh, hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. Um, uh, just wondered, do y'all have any messages for me? Thank you. Stephen, my dear, I'm saying, I'm, the message I'm getting is keep on showing up. Keep on being in your body, but showing up everywhere. Just be there for yourself in different circumstances, different realities, different dimensionals. Have this fun, which is showing up and experimenting. That's what I'm getting. Thank you. That's What's right. your highest excitement this day? What is your highest excitement this day? Connecting with more ETs and more planets that I resonate with, and also my 10 kids that are on other planets. What's your month and day of birth? Say it again. What is your month and day of birth? Uh, January 14th. Uh huh. And favorite color? Blue. Baby blue, sky blue. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. <laughs> well, just a second. Network. Network. You're a talented leader and acknowledge your dark side. Network. You're a talented leader and acknowledge your dark side. Transmute it in the positive. The dark side has its place. Has its place in this matrix, in this body, in this soul, in this soul, physical, mind, complex. Acknowledge it. Be here on Earth. You are a hybrid in every sense. You chose to be here to bring together the sky and the ground. Shift back and forth and enjoy the ride. Enjoy shifting back and forth. Enjoy 
lifting up and drowning down and coming back together as one. We bless that transmutational talent of yours. Thank you. Perfect. Any more questions, topics? I just want to expand on what you said, Max, just a moment ago that I loved so much once again. In the idea of personal harmony and, high, um, and for the highest good of ourselves does truly always serve the highest good of the all, I love what you just said. Every day to stay in harmony, ask yourself, when I wake, when you wake up, what is my highest joy today? What is my highest joy today? And whatever it is, be okay with that. And go with it and be it and share it and don't have any expectations. Don't worry about what's, how it's going to turn out or why you're feeling it. Just ask yourself what's your highest joy and then act on it. Make every decision from that frequency. That's harmony. Absolutely. Thank you, Max. Ah. All right. There was a question <laughs> um, it was some time ago, three weeks ago, in another channeling, somebody asked, a male, young male asked about, uh, he asked about masturbation and is it advisable to hold yourself and accumulate the energy, not to spill it? Many things were discussed back then, but it spooked so much <laughs> fear from the audience that the whole broadcast was messed up. <laughs> so I invite you to smile first. Don't take it too seriously, because if you take it too seriously, it will be spooked again. And with a smile, give not the whole answer, but a couple of suggestions because some things were missed because of the fear at that point. Mm. Yes, it is absolutely a way to access this idea of time flying when you're having fun, access this idea of inner harmony access this idea of what is my highest joy. We have to consider it, consider it that word, first of all. <laughs> uh, goddess, thank you. And also consider the orgasmic body that we live in right now, and that we can entertain, we can find our highest joy in so many activities outside of our body, cooking, swimming, juggling, painting, expressing, singing, those are such wonderful joys. But so is the liberation of the orgasm in ourselves. That's something that's right here, that's existing, that's saying, I'm here for your utmost joy. If you desire highest joy, and if you desire that coming from your organic Gaia body, I am right here. <laughs> it is so beautiful. And the mother encourages us to explore, yes, masturbation, explore, yes, holding off release of any sort, spilling over, as you said. Releasing is just a simple word for it. Women, even, we can hold our release. We can continue to access greater joy, deeper joy in this erotic, eroticness of the orgasm. Because when, when we're talking about highest joy, 
it's also another way to perceive it as living a highly erotic life. It's connecting with all our senses deeply, passionately, willingly, shamelessly, all the time. And we have to bring that to our sacred bodies and our sacred vessels. And allowing space for that to explore, allowing different ways that we have orgasms, different ways that we that we play with ourselves and in sacred place and with sacred boundaries with other people, if that is the medicine. Yes, these are all ways to access this this highest joy. And it is there are many techniques and it is whatever the individual feels called, called to explore, not what the ego feels called to explore, because the ego heard something that we were talking about uh, holding, holding on to any sort of uh, orgasm or not spilling over or releasing or not releasing. There's all this information on how to access your sacred sexuality your sacred sensuality, but trusting your intuition, your higher self, that whatever you need right now is exactly whatever that is that you need right now. And if it's still one way that you're doing something in your sacred space, in your sacred yoni or your sacred lingam, then that is so okay and that is so appropriate for you right now, right here. But acknowledge that there are greater opportunities for deeper access whenever you allow them to come through and whenever it's in alignment. But in the meantime, explore sacredly, heart-centeredly, always heart-centeredly, especially if you're learning to connect deeper with your sacred yoni or lingam and you're masturbating, connecting with one of your hands on your heart with the other one using to stimulate. That is a way that we connect deeper into our heart space of the sacredness of sexuality and the sacredness of love making with ourselves and with others. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm. From a hidden perspective, thank you. Yes, sacredness. From the hidden perspective, it's often very obvious when the person is stuck in their gender and hadn't access ha haven't had access to the opposite gender for a long time and if you are male and you just <laughs> just masturbate and you didn't it wasn't touched by women by motherly or sisterly or loverly women you are incomplete and then incompleteness by itself can be very creative. By itself it can be very creative, but also it can be very devastating as well. Same with women. If it is long withdrawal from the other biological touch, other gender, it's reflected in hunger, reflected in disbalance. So having the other sex partner, the touch, the connection, is hidden and essential. Yes. And <laughs> as you develop and as you follow your highest excitement, you just discover that the whole life is a masturbation. <laughs> and you just discover that sometimes your highest excitement would be so exciting you just don't have time to masturbate. <laughs> There is so much more that can be done, and the release can be done in so much uh, non-physical other ways that you just don't have time for that or don't feel like that anymore. Which doesn't mean that it's invalidated, it's just again okay, shifting between different stages. So we bless your choices, be wise, and be yourself. Discover yourself, and discover yourself in reflection to others. Connect to others, network. 
<laughs> network, reflect others, and don't stop yourself in your urge to become whole again one way or another or every way. Become whole again. That's the blessing, the goal, the gift of physical life. Hey, anybody who hasn't been spooked yet? <laughs> Michelle, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I have a pretty heartfelt question. Um, if one has been sexually violated, attacked, and it seems, I mean, in all the psychology that I've studied, that that even if you have the best of care, that's a really, really hard wound to move through and get past, get beyond. And if one doesn't even have access to that, and one, it seems that those under those circumstances usually take that on as guilt and shame and self-hatred in my experience. And is there, is it arrogant to believe that one could spiritually heal or help another heal? Like say through Reiki energy healing or is it really just none of my business and it's just their path for them to figure out the hardest thing is about letting go true love is letting go and that's one of the hardest things for people to recognize on the planet Well, I keep letting go. Not only for the other person, but also for yourself, which is the most important. Self-appreciation, the love for yourself to let go. No judgments. It's that simple. It sounds easier said than done, I know. But it's, it really comes down to the willingness, the courage. It really is about courage. The courage to see yourself sufficient enough to let go. That was a good question, Michelle, because, I mean, my daughter has also, I mean, she has had that happen and uh, actually moved out of this town because it has happened here three times. And uh, she just felt like she couldn't live here anymore. Well, my experience with who I am thinking of is it, it's so soul corrosive that it's dangerous and it fractures the mind so much. They, the person cannot see anything beyond I am broken, I am worthless I am damaged but why are uh, you choosing to hold on to it? Brian I like I'm just okay I'm not talking about me I'm talking about a situation and I actually wanted to throw this out there to get the presenters take on it hmm. Brian thank you Michelle, thank you. Both of you are loved and thank you for a contribution both. Please. Thank you, Michelle, for bringing this question because it's so pertinent that we talk about this sort of 
quiet violence that still happens to our beloveds all the time. And we must talk about this and we must share the deep, deep feelings, the deep complexity of it all. And I honor you for sharing this. So thank you for sharing this to begin with. That was my higher self. Let me take a moment with the goddess. She has something to say, but let me take a moment. She wants to just iterate that love is not arrogance and that believing that your friend can heal despite their situation is faith and that is virtue. Divine faith, having belief and trust that the heart can heal itself, and itself meaning the holistic human. I speak a lot about the heart-centered reality of it all and connecting with the heart, but it's connecting with the heart that is in essence the holistic human. Your faith, Michelle, is undeniable. It has gotten to, it has gotten you to your own sacredness of this moment, of your path of light. It's this divine faith that you carry that all can be healed. This trust that all can be healed. Acknowledging that, that you have the supreme backbone of faith, the goddess has faith in you, Michelle. She is here for you. The feminine, the sacred feminine is partly a void. She carries emptiness as much as she carries faith. And you, my dear, carry this as well. So much love to you. Much love, thank you. We wouldn't directly comment on the question, but we would reflect on the topic of violence to children and to ourselves. In Russian culture it is 
the rule, their tradition to break the child's resistance, to dominate the child physically. And most of the children pass through that. In Western culture, it's different, but still there is much, it's, it's non-physical, but there is still submission and still non-physical violence, non-physical violence. So most of the people living on Earth have that fragmentation, right? So how do you deal with this? Some people are much more vulnerable, others are much more resistant. They just take it easy, right? So the vulnerable people are the ones who break most and then they have this fragmentation which they have to deal with. Hmm. There is tons of way for yourself, for ourselves to shift out of the trauma. So shifting out is one of the easiest. Your whole, so just shift in the morning, every morning waking up, mm, I'm new, I'm new, I'm refreshed, I'm whole again. It's a different me, the past is gone, the trauma is experienced in all possible ways, lesson learned, check mark, and let's move on. And crying, of course, is the way of release, one of the most sacred, efficient, sacred, efficient, <laughs> two different world, words, right? Sacred and efficient and most healing ways of release. Getting sick and recovering from sickness. The reason to live, the choice. Why do you need to live? The choice is essential. Every moment, every second, every day, choosing what, why do you need, to, why do I need to stay here? And someday discovering there is nothing, nothing, nothing that attracts me here. I don't have the highest excitement. <laughs> I'm broke, right? And then next morning, Oh, there is still hope, there is still a way to serve, there is a still light at the end. So we bless your courage, we bless your courage and we bless your ability to heal. Expect a miracle and be a miracle. More reflections, questions, topics. I just want to take this opportunity to just send my love to you guys. I love you. Sean, thank you. What's your day and month of birth? Sorry, can you repeat the question? What's your day and month of birth? The 28th of September. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. Any words for Sean? What's your favorite color today? Oh, you re you realize that my favorite color actually changes from day to day. That's very interesting. <laughs> uh, today it's green. When I'm getting my dear Sean is freshen things up, bring a new sensory awareness, either with sense such as essential oils, incense, fruits, things with strong sense. flowers even. I'm getting this sense, sense more for you, my dear. 
That's interesting, because I have a particularly weak sense of smell. Mm -hmm. And here is an exercise for you, Sean. Just an exercise. You don't have to follow it for a long time. Just an exercise. Play dice with God. Take random things and throw into the air. Next time you come to a webinar, just take a most random thing you can think of. Weigh in your hand and think, can it become a question? And throw it into the webinar as a question. If it doesn't work as a question, take another thing and throw it to the fire. And sometimes it's a miss, and forgive yourself for a miss, and sometimes it's a, a diamond or a flower which is which will sparkle and produce wonderful reflections. So play with that. Play with stochasticity, with randomness, and allow it to express itself. And I appreciate your consistency, but just for exercise, <laughs> I invite your playing with random things. Allowing random things to come through no matter what. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for your sharing. And green, hmm, crocodile. How about green crocodile? <laughs> for you, just imagine a smiley crocodile. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid of crocodiles. I love every animal. Oh, just you do? So cute, crocodiles are with their eyes on top of their heads. When I saw a live crocodile, I was a major had a major breakdown. I think in the past life I had something to do with it. <laughs> so the next question, I, uh, which is important, important. Mm. I will phrase it in a very specific way. Mm. No, non specific. Way. There was some person, a friend, who was advancing in age. Um, I guess it's called menopause, I think. Some sometime around that age, and uh, she had a romance with a younger gentleman from Hungary, and. Uh, And then she had to be deceitful to others and to him. At least she, she chose that. And then she had a major health breakdown and things fell apart. So the question would be, any advice for, I guess, the transition of that, universal advice for transition of that age between Romance, attraction to young gentlemen, and choosing the to become an older lady and uh, other interests. Do you have any insights into that? Because it is important. It is something which, in my advanced age, I meet often. And uh, what's mean advanced? Me, me, okay, whatever age, I meet often, more often, and now I. These are my friends and patients and friends and patients, and it comes up often. Mm. Mm. Yes, the passage of the mother to the crone is the stage of menopause. And I'm not sure, but basically it's an older age when you just change. Yes, absolutely. It's a metaphoric... Uh, journey of the spiritual path of the divine feminine in the plentiful forms that divine feminine carries, the energies that she carries. We've been talking, um, I suppose, about a lot of mother, mother energy or so. Perhaps we haven't identified it in this call, but I feel deeply that we've been 
speaking on a lot of mothering, nurturing our own hearts, nurturing, and by doing so, nurturing other hearts. That is a very, a mother archetype. But when the mother is aging into wisdom, that is not, that is no longer nurturing her own heart and the hearts of others, there's opportunity for greater self-love of nurturing more of herself. There's this element of womanhood, of femininity that opens up, that a woman is able to access when menopause happens. And a lot of that is accessing her body, and a lot of that is accessing her sacred sexuality. It is very common for uh, women who have um, gone through menopause to say, oh, now I'm free type of thing. There's some energetics that's um, very curious. The goddess is saying one day we'll go into that, not right now, but it, just in general, this, this openness of I am free to have fun. That a lot of women in that stage right now were not as in tune with their deepest heartfelt self-love as they were when they were younger. So there's this switch of, oh, I can, I can love myself deeper. When the feminine has this allowance of loving herself deeper, then it's fun. It is so much fun. There's so much joy. There's so much imagination. There's so much creativity. And there's so much letting go, releasing the past. And sometimes that comes out in what you mentioned as affairs or things that are not what this feminine uh, embodiment was before. This feminine creature has shifted a little bit. And what is that about their naturally organic shifting body, the biological body is shifting and the energetic shift, of course, and the spiritual shift happens as well. And for a lot of women in that passage, it's this spiritual wisdom of, I allow myself to feel orgasms. I allow myself to feel free, to desire and to have my desires. That is a liberation. That is that is beyond comprehensible in words for us, but we do witness this and we do and we do notice the shift. But the only thing that we can do is say is celebrate it and encourage more of this opening of this divine flower that was always a flower, but it's opening more and more. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> Thank you. That was an unexpected answer. Thank you. Mm. Any more topics, questions, answers? I'd like to ask one thing. Um, in my experience, and I and I've just I'm through the menopause whole thing too, but my mate is um, I believe going through a male menopause. Can mm. you comment on that for me? Mm. Beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Because the masculine is aging with the feminine and whomever he's surrounded with, men, female, more or less, less or more of one embodied gender or the other, they'll pick up on the energetics undeniably. As women, when we're still menstruating, we pick up on our natural cycles and we become in sync with one another when we bleed, more often than not. Right? So this is an energetic, sensory experience that women, it's evident, we have this. But there's also this energetic exchange that men who are also aging in the time that women are having to go through menopause or postmenopausal, they pick up on that too. It is something not to not to dismiss at all. This is a wonderful, brilliant topic, and it's something that is is 
so, Lavis is so excited that you brought this up. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you know, like he um, even acted, well, his body reacted to me being pregnant with his child as well. Like he gained weight and everything. But in this case, I have been through menopause already for quite a few years, actually. And now at this time, he seems to be going through the same thing. Mm. So it's it's kind of different in that respect in that it's not in the same timing with me mm. but it's like now is his time to be going through that mm -hmm. so I just wondered if that was uh, I guess a normal thing that men went through as well whenever their time of age was correct absolutely absolutely it was evident for you my dear when you were pregnant because it was such a heightened uh, sense of we both created this divine child or you created a divine child with another masculine um, of some sort. There's that type of uh, sacred triangle effect, the masculine, the feminine, and the divine child happening. So syncing up is very, very clear that that would happen. And that happens for many people. But in terms of menopause, the woman going through menopause, this is a heroine's journey. This is her own journey that she has to go on. There's no you know, influence of the masculine um, biologically with sperm or anything like that. Like, um, Yeah, do they call it anapause, having to do with um, some testosterone drop? Ah, the goddess is saying... Yes and no. Hmm. Okay. She's saying that there is something to that, uh, biologically, physically, of course. Yes. Hmm. But there's something um, she's also saying to me right now that it's with their connection to spirit, and with connection, the crown chakra connection, with. Holy Mother, Father, God, that shifts as well. So this acknowledgement, I suppose, just just for playing of, perhaps this is a, a way to acknowledge um, sacred differences, is yes, the females are um, generally allowed to have this this joyfulness reality, this blissfulness, this fun, this connection with their, with their sacred bodies, sacred orgasm. But I feel as if, and yes, the goddess is confirming this as well, that men are having this deep, deep connection with spirit, that it's a holy connection that they're having at this part in their lives that's really coming in as a very large way a very large way, and it's humbling them, is what the goddess was telling me. <laughs> I have a question. Please. Um, the Beatles, uh, you know, they're well known channeling, you know, music, um, to be channels of music. And uh, I was wondering if they were channeling your energy when they released the song, Let It Be. If they were uh, channeling my energy? Yeah. Because in it they're like saying, you know, when Mother Mary, in times of trouble, and Mother oh. Mary stands beside me, and then speaking more the words of Let It Be. Absolutely. The Beatles, I believe... Um, the goddess is telling me to share, to share this story that um, in practical aspects, I believe it was, somebody might know this exact story, but John Lennon's mother, um, somebody's mother in the Beatles' name was actually Mary. That was her mother. So there was this archetype of proximity of these divine souls, the divine masculine that we know and feel that are the Beatles, that they were connected and that they were reverent towards the divine feminine in their lives and their mother, they were meditating, channeling actually through that and beyond that energetic is the Blessed Mother Mary 
because as feminines, as womb holders, we carry these stories of femininity, these archetypes of femininity, carrying, we all carry the Blessed Mother, the, Ma the Mary Magdalene, the mystic. We all carry that. So yes, to answer your question, I was channeled, all women were channeled during that Blessed Mother uh, remark in Let It Be. Beautiful question. Thank you for that. Thank you. What a beautiful answer. And yes, I I received the same exact answer as soon as Sean asked if he should even ask the question. It was immediate yes. In line with this thinking, I was I was been thinking, I've been contemplating this question for a few minutes, and I believe that this really is a great segue into it because I was it was about I've been receiving more in this idea of unity I've been and the idea of our extraterrestrial beings and spirit beings, our spirit guides, many of which are androgynous beings, um, or they are not, they're one or the, uh, and the other, um, or neither. Um, some are simply not physical beings at all. Um, but with that said, um, I've been getting this idea that this is part of what's happening with this new awareness in men in general and I love this new question about this menopause thing too and, and um, yes and I could have a, a, a whole conversation about that by itself <laughs> um, but with respect to the men I've been getting this idea that they too are now understanding all contain the feminine goddess energy, all of us, and they are finally beginning to embrace that it is not a, it, not only is it not a threat, it's essential to the balance of this idea of unity and understanding that equality, that idea that we are all both, and when you harm one, you harm all, you harm both. And when you embrace all, and you love all, and you express all, you are sending out love to both and all. Absolutely. All contained. All contained. Mm. I have a question. Please. Um, I was wondering. Uh, uh, I've been having this uh, this like uh, blockage medical condition. I don't know if it's in my chakras or or not, but uh, I keep giving uh, in my throat chakra, my throat area. I've, I've been having like real troubles, like breathing. Like there seems like a blockage, and getting a lot of chest. Uh, uh, sometimes, like I lose breath really easily. Like I can't do anything. Like if I ran for like ten seconds, I'd be like feeling like I'm having a heart attack. I just wanted, there's some blockages in this part of my spiritual art. Just, uh, is this a medical thing? Uh, I've been uh, trying to drink more water and everything and always bless my uh, food and water intake. I just wonder if you had more info on, on this. Mm. My dear, how is your sleep? Uh, it's up and down. It's up, well, because uh, it's, I don't have, like, yeah, it's up. Is how is your um, do you feel any pressure on your chest while you're sleeping? Uh, yes, and, and also whenever uh, like I I do something that uh, takes a lot of energy, I get I get over I get I, I get uh, I lose my breath really quick and feel like I can't I gasp for breath like there's some, there's been a it's been going on for a while mm -hmm. in my throat and chest area and I just wondering. Uh, what it is. Mm. I think what I'm feeling is that it started as adrenal fatigue in the sense of the body being exha exhausted and not being able to um, oop, who are the <laughs> uh, export energy um, as much as it needs to and that it's developed into it does feel as if this is a uh, something that you would seek medical attention to because it's it feels as if it is taking a lot from your spiritual life and existing because of the the compression it's having 
it's not just having compression on your body, it's having compression on your own liberation of your soul. So going into what I see as a new spiritual indications, hmm. I'm getting that your body and spirit are not relaxed and they haven't been to where they need to meet each other. Your spirituality and your relaxation need to meet each other and they haven't. And that has been the spiritual implication, the energetic implication that has triggered your body to overwork itself to try to relax because the body does that. It tries to compensate for not relaxing and working harder. Um, sort of like that yin and yang effect, but a little a little differently there. Um, that's what I'm getting, but yes, I am getting that I would definitely see a, a medic, a nurse of some sort for that. It seems it seems very difficult to manage and I empathize, brother. Thank you for sharing and blessings on your healing. Mm -hmm. Where may be the area of the world? I'm in uh, Texas, uh, Fort Worth area, mm -hmm. United States. Uh, how much, what percent of your day do you spend on the computer? Um, uh, well, probably, whenever, probably an hour or two. I, I work uh, basically 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday. So I uh, uh, don't have much time to get on the computer. What do you do? What kind of job do you do? I work as a security officer at a North Crowley High School. How is the school? How is the work? It's a it's a driving around in a in a vehicle, uh, patrolling the outside. Uh, vicinity, the parking lots and everything. It's a lot of sitting down, and I do also get up uh, three times. I have to direct the buses and stuff uh, in the morning, and then also in the evening when the uh, the school lets out. Six to six, basically. Would it be appropriate if you did more walking and less driving? Uh, if if it uh, there's not much work at in this job. Uh, there's not much work I can. I also have uh, feet. I have severe arthritis and a uh, coalition in my feet uh, where I can't stand up very uh, for long periods of time. And uh, I've already been through mo multiple doctors and arch supports. I have flat feet uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I have problems with my, uh, my feet so where I can't stand up for long periods of time. So it causes intense pain. I understand. It all comes together, right? It's not one condition, it's multiple things coming together. The job too much, driving per day on a job, uh, arthritis, diet, breathing, all comes together. Um, the way out for you would be to find a way to move in a healthy way to do more of the body movement in a healthy way. If you had more time, swimming would be, like daily swimming would be ideal. Uh, as far as you don't have much time, maybe just dancing within the seat. Like on the seat, you can move a little bit here and there. If your feet are not working, you still can move on the seat like dancing and playing the music which is appropriate for the dancing and uh, moving physically. So moving physically at, at, at your bed, moving physically. Uh, did you try yoga? Have you tried yoga? Uh, no, I haven't tried yoga yet. Yeah, YouTube yoga. Find the video instructions which are easygoing without extremes and do like 
3% of what they do. Like if they shift all the way, you shift 3% of that or 5%. Just their idea, shift in your mind, but don't stretch your body too strongly. Just uh, the idea of moving the energy might help your arthritis and your breathing. It's the system thing, the systemic thing. You have to work on the whole system. And yoga and Reiki, self-Reiki and self-yoga would be hmm, the easiest path for that, paths for that. But basically, you need to start moving again. And finding a job which, look around, maybe there is a job where you work fewer hours per day and have a better day-night sleep uh, timing. timing. Food-wise, also, like, when you work as much, your food possibly wouldn't be as healthy. So cooking food uh, in the morning and taking with you, like, freshly prepared every morning would be, or from the evening would be, or if you have a way your relatives could do, make it for you, that would be help, helping as well. <sighs> Thank you for asking. That's, um, that's tough. You have a chance. You have a good chance. Uh, make best of out of it. Make best out of it. We bless your courage. And a miracle happen. Invite angelic energies. Miracles happen. Invite angelic energies in your meditations and meditate on your health as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're awesome. More questions, topics. I'll jump in and have one more question for today, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. It comes with my family. It's like uh, my sister, my brother, my brothers, and me. We're all grinding teeth at night. And, um, why is that? <laughs> is there an answer to that? Mm. It's fear. It's fear. There's some unconscious fears that you all haven't been able to access or acknowledge. And the fear comes out in this in this activation of tension. And we're grinding our teeth. Our whole body is tight. It's just not our facial muscles, not just our jaw. Our whole body is tight, although it might not feel like it. When we're in bed, you know, we perceive where our whole body's relaxed. But notice how your heart's doing when you're grinding the teeth. Notice how if your body, can you say, is my hand relaxed? Is my elbow relaxed? Is my shoulder relaxed? It's my collarbone relax. Relax your entire body, focusing just the tiniest attention to all the surface of your body. And just do that while you're laying down in bed, while observing that you're grinding your teeth or having a way to take acknowledgement from the very act that you're grinding your teeth to acknowledge to your whole body what that's doing. And you can also, of course, what I do too, all the time, because I used to grind my teeth as well, uh, because I carried a tremendous amount of fear and tremendous about uh, tre blah, 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 <laughs> tremendous amount of guilt in speaking my fears too, because I was grinding teeth and I had these fears, but my fears weren't being spoken. My throat chakra couldn't talk about my fears with one another, so. Everything was internalized and just mechanically just that edge. It's it's very um, it's very opportunic opportunistic because it's so clear that there's something going on that's not being released. So allowing relaxation, allowing mindfulness to go to your jaw, to go to all um, your eyebrows, all the sinuses, all everywhere behind your ears, your neck, uh, behind your skull. And also a trick that I use is actually just holding your face, taking both your hands and holding your jaw, releasing your jaw, uh, moving your head around. Wow. 
I'm so much more relaxed. I'm so much more relaxed when my jaw is relaxed. Oh, wow. Type of thing. So just, just feeling around, giving your jaw some love and relaxation is a way to is to access more of your truth that wants to come out that is still being veiled by fear. Yes, more truths come out and letting go of the fear. It's raining now, so that's where, why our <laughs> speech became blurred. blurred. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining, the rain knocks on the window and just next house down there, down this direction there is a lake with waves and the weather. It's interesting. It is purified sadness. The rain, the sadness. That sadness is actually healing. Allow yourself emotional release. Allow yourself sadness release, crying, being sad, and release it. The jaws are lymphatic vessels go right here, where the bone, that bone kind of rotates, that's the joint. So that's where lymphatic vessels for the jaw sit. And the immune cells go back and forth. So massage that place, meditate on that place, put the hands when you do meditation. Intend to relax. Practice shifting from tense to relax, to tense again, to relax again. When you learn that shift, intend to stay relaxed. Intend to, you, for your mouth to have a little space, open space. You can program yourself to keep it even during the night and during the day. Practice intended meditation, intended relaxation, and shift back and forth between being focused and being relaxed. Focused, relaxed. Proactive passive. Femininity is the answer here this acceptance allowance and faith faith is the answer i'd like to add that i also have the jaw grinding but um on top of that when i'm meditating my ears have been popping quite a bit and i wondered if that is all connected or if it's something different I am getting yes and no. Yes, that it's a signal. These ears, this the sensation of ears popping is a signal for you to Relax. Oh, my ears just pop. Oh, time to relax. Oh, what? What was that sensation? That was different. Oh, time to relax. An opportunity to shift is what I'm receiving that your ears are <laughs> trying to talk to you <laughs> as a playful indication of, of greater relaxation. But also, it's a, it's truly a gift because when we're when our ears are popping, when we hear ringing sensations in our ears, when we hear any sort of sounds that we're not as aware of, we haven't been as aware of, and then we're tuning into this this different vibration that's coming from our ears, our ear chakras. 
those are ascension symptoms too. So acknowledge that this is a gift of ascension symptoms, but also with that, a gift of, oh, it's time to relax more. That's right. The spiritual ascension is about relaxing more. Oh, that's right. Thank you, ears. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for speaking. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. And then when I do lay down to go to sleep, I um, so I can hear my heartbeat as, as if it's in my ears. Mm -hmm. like, you know, every pump and the sound of the blood rushing through. and It's quite comforting in a lot of, in, a, in kind of a strange way. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's just started happening too. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, expanding on what was said, in agreement with what was said, there is multiple explanations to the same thing. One explanation that comes to me when your ears pop and you hear the sound, pew, and you're just aware, that is they just rebooted the system. The matrix, the matrix has been rebooted. Again, just rebooting the matrix. They uh, they glued together the film that was the previous part. That's the next part, and usually they reboot it not at the essential moment, but between that lesson and that lesson non-essential moment. So say thank you. Okay. Thank you for rebooting. Okay. Rebooted the matrix, but also rebooted the magic as well. More topics. We have a few more minutes. When it comes to the ear pop and just relating to it, um, uh, I just would just about 30 minutes ago, I went to uh, get a drink uh, at 7-Eleven, and I uh, went to the store, and almost immediately, and, I, and there's this guy, the manager, he's uh, he's a black dude named Ronald, and uh, always, I'm real, always friendly, always, you know, throw my energy in, hey, say hello, how you doing, and uh, when I uh, went inside the store and I looked at him and said hello to him, my, immediately my left ear started ringing like really loud. My, my left ear ringing really loud. I was wondering uh, if you had any info on that. Yes. I'm getting that that's one of your guides that's, that's coming through. Mm. What kind of guide? I'm getting it that it's a star guide, part of your star family that's coming through. That's what was activated there. Hmm. That's all the information I'm getting. That that was that activation in your ear was off. There was a guide coming through. Yeah. Did, did it have anything to do with Ronald? Because I I shook his hand for a while and I looked in his eyes and then he seemed like a. And then uh, after I, we we actually looked in, into each other's eyes for quite some time and then he said, "What's on your mind?" And I was like, "I'll oh, just." Nothing. Uh, is that is that related to anything? That oh, sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Um, oh, that is absolutely an activation of both of your higher selves. That is a brilliant uh, uh, setting that ju that you just gifted us <laughs> with. This when two higher selves have this energetic. You were actually handshaking, so there was contact. Amazing. But also that sacred contact with your eyes, this gaze of the beloved in one another. As short as it may be, as brief as it is, in the 7-Eleven, which the rule of spirituality is everything is spiritual, everything is sacred, so you're in a sacred setting wherever you are, having the sacred connection with one another your guides were all with you during that connection, your higher selves. And I was getting that this was a more of a galactic sort of frequency that was happening. That it wasn't necessarily angelics or um, ascended masters coming through. It was both higher selves but also some galactic influence too because you both understand that there are more than what the eye sees. And with that understanding, there is understanding of 
our star brothers and sisters. You both gaze at the sky similarly. You both carry star seed um, energy, whether it's you know identified or not in one another. And that was an activation of this sacred, starry type of brotherhood. Awesome. Can I add that that little break in there? I definitely heard another voice saying that was an activation. Did you guys hear that too? Yep. Oh, so it went on the record. We'll go double check. <laughs> Actually, we all did. All of us started chapping at ch typing in the chat box at the same time. Oh, so Stephen, was there a voice from your phone? Somebody passed by? Were you alone at the moment? Oh, yeah, you uh, talking about at the very end. Yeah, the, I have a, a radio. I got a radio uh, that uh, that the administrators use and everything, and it's very high-pitched. So that's, that's probably what you might have heard. No, I, it wasn't No, 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 I I'm not heard, talking about... I definitely about, heard that was I'm not talking about a physical... I'm not talking about... I did not hear a physical sound. I did. I definitely heard... A, but, but I got... High -pitched, and I, I got a high pitch in my ear... It, right after you said that, Stephen, I got a high pitch in my ear, and then my my ear started to get hot. So I knew right away what I was thinking was exactly what happened. Was exactly what what Brooke said. Uh -huh. So maybe this rebooting of the matrix is not just rebooting of the matrix. It could be rebooting of the matrix after a system upgrade. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, it's my ears. My left ear is starting to heat up I too. Mean, right much. now, it's my right ear is so hot right now, and actually, I know there's other entities that speak to me specifically in my left ear. So, you guys, I just had to like really rub my left ear, so because it was just tingling <laughs> way down deep inside. That's just incredible. Wow. Yes, I mean this is. This no is a doubt. Big wow. <laughs> no doubt about it. I mean, Val typed it. Michelle typed. I mean, we're all thinking it and feeling it at the same time. So, and my ear is still hot. <laughs> Clearly, right. it was an activation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, now they're both hot. This is so weird, you guys. Oh my God, my ears are absolutely burning. <laughs> And, my, and I have big ears, let me tell you. I got the big wolf ears. <laughs> hey, so do I. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, oh. Uh, so, Brian, you're ready for the galactic uh, blessings, right? Wendy, you're ready too, right? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, whenever you guys are wanting to wrap this up, that's cool. Anybody else is, uh, is into blessings? I'll do one. Wonderful. So you're the third. Um, I guess I will be fourth, and then we'll let uh, <laughs> Brooke to finish to complete. Anybody else? Any more burning questions before we start the blessings? I can do one blessing also. I can go last. We'll mm -hmm. uh, be. Fourth, I will be fifth, and Luke will be sixth. <laughs> All right. Um, Brian, if you wish, you can uh, take the microphone. All right. You guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Kushia Tania, Liani Rilia Kania, Shulu Tonua. Iki Anania, Salia to Colo Nunuye, Akia Silio Niam Iki Otoa, Ilian Niasia Koto, Iliaki Oluro Tua, Nia Kili Rolo Tua, Chilian Anania, Kua Tia Cassiata, Ilian Hmm. Any translations?
I got the eye of Horus is my eye. What is the eye of Horus? Uh, an Egyptian god. Yeah, I got something about the fish. Like they're eating the fish and taking, what's that expression in English? Taking part of Christianity. I could just add in there, uh, thank you for all the fish. I know that line. Uh-huh. Who's next? Thank you, Divine Goddess. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you for bringing this beautiful energy here to us today, showing us that we can identify the Divine within us, the Divine Goddess, the kindness, the giving, the mother, the nurturing within us. Thank you for showing the gentle side. Yet it is strong and powerful for it carries the wisdom of creation. Niato yo kora kai li asata ya paya yinan malo akahi tiata soto loroahi pria kaki priana. Ni ali asata ya kaya wa i sasa ya wa ki ashoria kashatu. Matora kashali asata ya kakora mi akata ya katora. Ni hayali asasia na ya kwa kala kwa kapoto lua kasia na ni siya ya kala. No to lua kashia kapora katia to lukuha. Makoto ya hasaka ni to lua kashaka o to yushua. Ni na lua kakia to lukuha shia kalia tatima na sonoa. No to lua kataya satia sotoa shia noa soto luaka. It is in your softness that you will find your strength. Niatalia katayasa, shinato yokoala, makoyaha, mahala, namaste. Thank you. Stephen? Thank you. Much love to all. Daniela, あ、ハートフォトアイスドンとしてスピンでとあ、時間にあたや。イスニオ、あそわさなティオ。あにやにあご。あにやとこにあそらでにかた。あやまんじやおろ。そとねさ。あいさんにたとそといか。あにおわ
Ah, keep it simple. Stay simple. The simpler you go, the higher you rise. Keep it simple. Stay pure. The purer you become, the more you embrace. Unity is unity. Unite with all and purify yourself to be the eyes of God, to be God themselves. The river I know is the river I am. Mm -hmm. Is it my turn? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Relishing in this moment, beloveds, thank you so much for the peace that you bring, the inquisitiveness of the love and your divinity that is flowing so wide and so deep in each other with one another in the sacred vessel that is our body, our gift from the goddess. Immense, tremendous gratitude for this exchange today. I nai guan o yang Chano bwa chano bwa chano nyan wa bwa nyan gyan go nyan bwa bwa nyan nyan go bwa bwa nyan kaya o kaya na na no ina kaya la na kwa Ishwana Shana Lalo Lano Mano Yi Inamona La Jaya La Mahaya Lano Aina Mo Jisha Jiju Anna to believe to believe is to choose your own way my gift to you is for you to believe in the stuff that makes you strong. Your dream is your way through life. The positive belief gives positive results. Namaste. 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 Ami tuakasa mahasa.
My heart is singing. Thank you. Makai mm. kiwashona. All right, thank you everybody for being with us. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Max. This was so beautiful. What gorgeous energy again. Mm. Unmute yourself and make some noise. <laughs> thank you, guys. Hey, Max. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Max. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Thank you. And for viewers, you know how to find Brooke. It's uh, brookealison at gmail.com. And you can sign up for more fun <laughs> in private sessions. <laughs> All right, stop in the broadcast. Bye-bye, the viewers bye -bye. on uh, uh, in the, of the, our recordings. Mm.